You probably have all heard the expression of exponential growth, which is usually used to describe a very fast increase in numbers or value. This growth has the unique character that its rate of change, in other words, the speed of the increase, is never a constant. Instead, the rate of change continues to increase as well. To demonstrate the power of exponential growth, let me retell the old story of rice on the chessboard. The story goes like this: When a very smart person first invented the game of chess, he presented it to a king. The king was very pleased and asked the inventor to name his reward. The inventor said, "I only want some rice from you, if you don't mind. You see this chessboard; it has 64 squares. I want one grain of rice on the first square, two on the next square, four on the next." And then eight on the next square, so far and so forth, doubling the number of rice grain every time until all 64 squares are filled up with rice. The king really thought what the inventor asked for was not much, and quickly agreed to this term and asked his servant to calculate how much rice he needed to give to the inventor. So, let's try to help them out. We need two times eight, 16 grains. Of rice on the next square, and two times sixteen, thirty-two grains on the next, and then sixty-four on the next square, one hundred and twenty-eight on the next. Now we have filled up the first row of this chessboard. At this point, we realize that every number is two to a certain power. One is two to the zeroth power. Two is two to the first power. One hundred and twenty-eight is two to the seventh power. So, for convenience, we can write a function, f equals to two to the power x, with x being the independent variable corresponding to a square on the chessboard, and the function value f x can be used to evaluate the number of rice grains on that particular square. So, by the time we fill up the second row of this chessboard, the number of rice on this square can be calculated as f fifteen. That equals to thirty-two thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight. And by the time we fill up the first half of the chessboard, and the number of rice on the last square here is f thirty-one, which is already more than two billion. And if we fill up the entire chessboard, so for this last square here, this is how many rice we need, close to ten to the nineteenth power. And the total number of all the rice grains on this chessboard can be calculated using this equation, and that is more than 18 times 10 to the 18th power, which will be a pile of rice higher than Mount Everest. I hope through this example, you can start to understand the meaning of an exponential function. This is only a function with base of two. What if the inventor asked for three grains of rice on the second square and nine grains on the next square, and so far and so forth, tripling the amount every time? Imagine how many more rice it would take to fill up this chessboard. And by the way, in case you're wondering how this ancient story ends, there are many different endings. My favorite one is: the king quickly realized that he made a mistake. Therefore, he told the inventor, "That is such a fair reward for a smart person like you. And of course, I don't want to cheat you out of whatever you deserve. So please count all the rice before you leave, every single one of them. Now, could you estimate how many lifetimes it will take for this inventor to count his reward?" So the definition of exponential function. f x equals to a to the x power. This is an exponential function f with base a. A is a coefficient; it's a constant in this function. The independent variable is still x. As a coefficient to this function, a can be any positive real number except for one. This is equivalent of saying a can be any number between zero and one, or it can be any number bigger than one. In the rise on the chessboard. Example that I shared earlier, that function we wrote f x equals to two to the x power, is a function with base two. In this case, a equals to two. 
The reason why a cannot be one is because if a equals to one, then this function becomes one to the x's power and is always one. And that will be a constant function, not exponential function. Let's first look at the graph for the exponential function fx equals to a to the power x when a, the base number, is bigger than one. The graph of this function is always increasing, corresponding to the exponential growth we learned earlier from the rise on the chessboard example. The domain for this function includes all real number, x can be any real number, but a to the x power, the function value, is always bigger than zero. There's no sense of symmetry from the graph. It does have a specified y-intercept 0, 1. This is because no matter what the base value a is, a to the 0th power always equals to 1. There is no x-intercept, but there is a horizontal asymptote, the x-axis. Now let's look at the graph for the other group of the function, when the base constant a is between 0 and 1. What do you think the difference is when compared to the previous graph? The graph for this group of exponential function is always decreasing, corresponding to an exponential decay, which is a significantly fast decrease in value. But other than that, the other major properties are all the same. Same domain, again, includes all real number, same range, no matter what x is, the function is always bigger than zero. There's no sense of symmetry. And the same y-intercept, zero, one. Again, for a that is between zero and one, a to the zeroth power still equals to one. No x-intercept and same horizontal asymptote the x-axis. If we graph the function for fx equals to 2 to the x power, this is an example of exponential function with a base constant a that is bigger than 1. And on this same coordinate system, let's graph the function gx equals to 1 half to the x power. In this case, the base constant a is 1 half which is between 0 and 1. And if you look at these two graphs, do you notice that they are actually mirror images of each other? Or they are reflection of each other with respect to the y-axis? And why is that? Don't forget 1 half equals to 2 to the negative first power. Therefore, for g function, which is 1 half to the x power, that equals to 2 to the negative first to the x power, which equals to 2 to the negative x power. Therefore, that is simply f within the parenthesis negative x. And as we learned from the transformation of functions, when gx equals to f within the parenthesis negative x, the graph of gx can be derived from the graph of fx by finding the reflection of fx about the y-axis. And this applies to any exponential functions that satisfy this relation.